Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Tozan. I am the Chief Wellness Officer at Al Mansori. And today we're going to be discussing diabetes. Diabetes is one of the biggest health problems that we face here in United Arab Emirates. So we have a lot of employees that have diabetes. We have a lot of employees who are pre-diabetic. Uh, so you're either watching this because it's a uh, health workshop or it's because you have diabetes and need to make some changes to your diet and lifestyle. So we'll discuss what diabetes is and what those changes are that you can do. So first let's talk about what is diabetes. So a lot of people have heard the term diabetes but not quite sure what it is. They know it has to do with sugar and that is correct. Diabetes is a problem with blood sugar. So the blood, you have the bloodstream in the body. The bloodstream in the body has lots of sugar in it so that the body can use the sugar for quick energy. And that sugar needs to be there. However, the body will control the amount of sugar in the blood. The body wants the amount of sugar in the blood to be between 80 to 100. That's the range, 80 to 100. If you use some, the body will put some sugar back into it. If you need more, it will get more. If you need less, it, will, it usually keeps a tight balance, 80 to 100. So some people will have their sugar goes too low. If your sugar goes too low, below 80, what we see happen with people is they'll have like a type of hypoglycemic episode where their sugar's too low. They don't have that energy, that quick energy available. What you see happen to these people is they may faint. So that's a problem. We need to keep it at least 80. Now on the other side, over 100, if we have problems with it being over 100, that's a different problem. That's where we have diabetes. That means you have too much sugar in the blood. So diabetes is all about keeping that sugar balanced. When your body cannot keep that sugar balanced anymore, between 80 to 100, that's where we end up with a condition called diabetes. Okay, so when we take in sugar, the body releases insulin. So you've probably heard this term insulin, and that comes from the pancreas actually. The pancreas will release insulin, and the insulin will help the blood sugar get out of the blood into the cells so that you keep that range of 80 to 100. Okay, so with diabetes, oftentimes the problem is with the insulin. Your body can be making too much insulin, but the body's not listening to it. Or we have the problem, as in type 1 diabetes, where the body's not making any insulin. So those are two different types of problems with the insulin here. So, like I said, we have type 1. Type 1 is usually a disease that little children get, and it's an autoimmune disease. And it's when children's pancreas, their pancreas stops making insulin. So if they eat sugar, the body cannot handle that sugar. It doesn't know what to do with it. It stays in the blood. That's the problem. You can die from this. If you cannot produce insulin and you're eating a bunch of sugar, you can die. And that is why a lot of people who are older who have type 2 diabetes have to inject insulin as well. So type 2 diabetes is a little different from type 1. Type 2 diabetes is the diabetes we're going to be discussing a lot today. And that's the type of diabetes you get when you're older. And that's the type of diabetes that you are producing insulin, but the body is not listening to the insulin. And that's the other problem. So we'll be talking today mostly about type 2 diabetes because this is the type of diabetes that you can prevent. You don't need to have diabetes, even if everyone in your family has diabetes. Yes, there's a genetic component to having diabetes, but just because 
You, your mother and father's diabetic does not mean that you have to be diabetic. You can prevent diabetes by following a healthy diet and lifestyle. And you, I know people who eat healthy and exercise and do what they need to do, and they don't have diabetes, but yet everybody in their family has it, okay? So that's the important thing to understand right now. You can prevent having diabetes. Okay. So, the main problem with having a very high sugar in the blood, remember we said the sugar wants to be in a range from 80 to 100. Now, if you're diabetic and you're taking in a bunch of sugar and the body cannot pull the sugar out of the blood and keep it in the cells so it's not harming you, what happens is the blood sugar goes up, 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 up. And the bad part about that is now the blood is starting to turn sticky because it's full of sugar. Sticky like honey. You know, if you touch honey, it's very sticky. So when your blood is full of sugar, it's like honey running through your veins. Should blood run like water or should it be like honey, thick and sticky? It should be like water, right? It needs to flow, it needs to flow everywhere and bring the nutrients and bring the oxygen. If the blood is thick and sticky, it cannot flow. And this is where the problem comes in with diabetes. People having thick, sticky blood all the time, the blood gets in these tiny, tiny blood vessels and blocks the flow of blood and we get tissue death. So the symptoms that you see with diabetes, uh, people will tend to be very thirsty because they're urinating a lot. And those are some of your typical symptoms uh, when you first get diabetes. Um, but then as diabetes goes forward, as the disease progresses, we get a lot more complications. Like I said, you have all this sticky, sticky blood blocking these little blood vessels. So what you end up, you get these little blood vessels in the eye and the thick sticky blood gets in there, you end up going blind. You have the little blood vessels in the heart that feed the heart and you get these uh, thick sticky blood that's blocking the blood vessels in the heart, you end up with heart attack. You, same thing in the kidney. You get these little tiny blood vessels filled with this thick sticky honey blood. The blood cannot flow, you're going to have kidney failure. And this is what we see with diabetics. They give heart attacks, they go blind, they lose their um, kidneys. Also, you have these non-healing infections, okay? As a diabetic, you need to keep checking your feet and your legs because what happens with a diabetic is they get numb. They cannot feel their legs and they get a scratch, but they don't feel it. And then they don't, really, who, they don't really look at their legs too much, so they don't realize that the wound is festering. And then by the time they find out it's too late, they find it, it's already rotted and it starts rotting the leg, okay? When it gets like this, you have to cut the limb off. And this is very common with diabetics. You'll see a lot of people that, have a, that get one of their legs cut off. Why? It starts from this, okay? Uh, you have a lot of fungal infections as well. Um, yeah, so your long-term complications, this is a guy who's losing his leg, heart attack, stroke, um, you know, kidney failure, blindness. Those are things you can expect if you're diabetic. Be being diabetic, diabetes doesn't kill you quickly. It's like a long, slow death. That's what sucks about diabetes. It, it really reduces your quality of life and it slowly kills you, okay? Who wants to live like that? Not me. So you may be watching this film if you're pre-diabetic. That, you should take that as a good sign. That means you have time to turn this around. You know, people who get cancer or other diseases, they don't find out till it's too late. They go to the doctor, the doctor says, you have cancer, you're gonna die. Diabetics get a warning sign. When you're pre-diabetes, this is a warning sign that's saying stop what you're doing and make some changes so that you don't become diabetic in the future. 
So this is a good thing. Now, prediabetes really, um, it's when you have a fasting blood sugar that's going above 100, right? So you got 105, 110, 115, 120, that's prediabetes. Or an HbA1c above a 5.7 really. You have a 5.7 of your HbA1c, and we'll talk about that in just a second exactly what that is, but that means you're going to, you're headed towards diabetes. You need to make changes now. If you're at that point and you make the changes, you can completely reverse diabetes and never get diabetes in your life, but you need to make some diet and lifestyle changes for life, okay? So just to uh, be on the same page, there is no cure for diabetes. We can reverse you. I can reverse you to a point where you're feeling better and you're not having the complications. But I cannot get you to a point where you'll never be susceptible to diabetes and you can eat all the junk food and sugar you want. It doesn't work that way, okay? So we can get you to a place where you're not having heart attack, where you're not having kidney failure, you're not losing your legs, but you will always have to watch what you're eating. You won't be like a child who can eat candy all day long. You go and do that, it's going to have an effect on you, a really bad effect, okay? And at some point, sometimes you get to a point where you've gone too far and you cannot reverse diabetes. So this is what I tell people, the earlier you can catch it, the better. We can catch you in your pre-diabetic stage or when you've just become diabetic, this is the best time, easily reversed. But if you've been diabetic for years and you have these high, high blood sugar numbers and you've had major complications, at that point it's a lot more difficult to reverse. So don't wait that long. You need to do it now, do it today, make the changes today. So what are the causes of diabetes? Of course, eating a diet high in sugar is contributing to it, but also eating a diet high in carbohydrates. A lot of people tell me, I don't eat sugar, I don't eat sugar, how am I diabetic? Yeah, but you're eating rice and bread and noodles all day long. You eat rice, bread, noodles all day long, that's like eating sugar. These foods have no nutrition in them, right? Eating a lot of junk foods, Junk foods, uh, potato chips, candy bars, ice cream, that's junk food. It's called junk for a reason. It's junk, okay? It's not good for the body. Also, uh, eating a lot of bad fats. You eat bad oils, trans fats. Trans fats are found in junk food, fast foods, McDonald's, Burger King, those kind of fats. Very bad for you. Those are contributing to diabetes. Eating a lot of fructose, high fructose corn syrup. A lot of these sodas have a lot of this high fructose corn syrup in it. Lot exercising, having a sedentary lifestyle. If you're someone who sits in a desk all day and then goes home and sits on a couch all night and watches TV, you are sedentary. That means you're not moving. You must do some kind of exercise. Get you a fit, uh, one of these... Uh, Movement things that remind you every hour to get up and go walk. Do something. You need to have some movement in your life. And then high toxic overload on the body is a huge cause of diabetes. People who are getting all these chemicals coming in and not doing anything about it, eating a lot of pesticides, drinking out of a lot of plastics, getting a lot of cigarette smoke in the body, shisha, perfumes, all these smells that are coming, they're all chemicals. These are all toxins. And these have a bad effect on the body and also uh, contribute to having diabetes. Okay, so what's the problem? What we see with diabetics is that they have very out of control blood sugars. So, okay, so say we take a glass of orange juice. Okay, so say this is orange juice. Or Coca-Cola. You could say it's Coca-Cola. Both of them are pure liquid sugar. That's what they are. They're pure liquid sugar. Orange, oranges is a fruit. A, or, a real orange has fiber in it. So the fiber will stop the sugar from going up. But when you drink it in a liquid form, the fiber is taken out. And it's all sugar. Coca-Cola, same thing. Now, 
if I take a sip of Coca-Cola or orange juice, pure liquid sugar, okay, my blood sugar is going to start to go up very quickly because it's liquid. It doesn't have to be digested. The blood sugar starts going up. My brain says, tells my body, emergency. The sugar is going above 100. It's going too high. Take it out of the blood. So my cells will gr start grabbing the sugar out of the blood to get it into a normal range. So what you see with a person who is healthy is their blood sugar does like this. Now a diabetic, it doesn't work that way. Remember, we said it's not working. So they drink a Coca-Cola or an orange juice. They take a sip. Now their blood sugars skyrockets, yeah? The blood sugar is going up and the brain says, emergency, get the sugar out of the blood. Take the sugar out. We need to keep it in the normal range. But the body cannot. So what you see with a diabetic who has just taken a sip of Coca-Cola orange juice, the blood sugar now skyrockets. This is the problem. Remember? Too much sticky blood. Too much sticky blood. So a normal person like this, a diabetic, pew, sticky blood. Now we have damage. Okay? And with the diabetic, the issue here too is, so it skyrockets, and not only does it skyrocket, but after a while the body finally compensates to get rid of that sugar. Now it overcompensates and it goes low, 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 low. So what you see with a diabetic's blood sugar is this roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, up, down, right? If you look at this red line, this is a diabetic's blood. Their sugar goes high, 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 and then it goes low, low, low. High, 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 low, low, low. We don't want to see that. This is very bad, okay? We want the green line. This is a person who is healthy. This is a healthy person's blood sugar. They take sugar in. It goes up and levels out. We don't see this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down roller coaster that we see with diabetics. So in trying to reverse diabetes, what you need to do is balance the blood sugar. When you balance the blood sugar, the diabetes goes away. But if you have this up, down, up, down, up, down that we're seeing, now we're having problems. So the number one thing to do to stop having this up, down, up, down, up, down, the number one thing to do, stop putting sugar in your mouth. Stop it. No more sugar in here. No more drinking Coke. No more drinking orange juice. you got to stop the rice and bread. Those are sugars, okay? Those are skyrocketing your blood sugars. You stop eat. You stop putting those things in the mouth. That's how we start controlling the blood sugar and getting into normal, okay? So keep that in mind because everything we're doing is to balance these blood sugars. Okay, so what do you want to do to balance the blood sugars? You want to make sure you're measuring, okay? You need to be measuring and taking your blood sugar. Then you want to uh, balance it with diet, with the food you're putting in your mouth. Also, you, there's supplements you can take that can help you balance your blood sugars. However, you have to do the diet first. You cannot just take supplements. The supplements don't work by themselves. You have to do the supplements with the diet. Can you do the diet by itself? Yes, a lot of people do the diet by themselves. If they are not too far gone, you can just do diet. People who are way far gone have to do diet combined with the supplementation. You also need to start exercising regularly and then getting away from the toxins, avoiding the ones you can avoid. You don't have to drink out of plastic. You don't have to put plastic containers in your microwave. You don't have to smoke. You don't have to smoke shisha. Those are things you can avoid. You avoid what toxins you can so that they're not, the body has a chance to start to heal itself. And then also stress reduction is an, also an important part. Stress contributes to diabetes as well. So number one, measure your blood sugars, right? So we want to get a glucometer. Looks like this. You take, you prick your finger, you take a drop of blood. It's going to tell you how much sugar is in your blood. Now, we only want to take a fasting blood sugar. 
That means you, you, you stop eating at night, you go to sleep, the morning you wake up and you take it before you eat. You need a good six to eight hours of sleep, of fasting, and then you can take the fasting blood sugar. If you take the blood sugar after, uh, if you take the um, uh, measure of your blood sugar after you've eaten food, that tells us nothing. It tells us absolutely nothing. We don't know how long was it since, how long has it been since you ate the food? How much sugar did you eat? You have to take all those into account. So it's a waste of time to take it after you've eaten. The only time you would do that is if you want to know how a food how you your body reacts to a food. Because some people are different. Some people will eat a sweet potato and their blood sugars will not rise. Some people will eat a sweet potato and their blood sugars will rise. So you have to be uh, very careful with that. So you can, if you want to see how a food affects you, that would be the only time you would take that blood sugar after eating. Okay. So we want a fasting blood sugar. You look at the fasting blood sugar. Now, like I said, blood sugar fasting should be 80 to 100. That's the level, 80 to 100. Now, we have what's also called an HbA1c. HbA1c. This you cannot do. You need to go to the hospital and have your blood taken. This is a three-month average of your sticky blood. Okay? So it shows us what's been happening in your blood for the last three months. And this is what we read, this is the more accurate number because this can tell us, uh, this is what we really use to diagnose diabetes. Because sometimes the fasting blood sugar may be wonky for some reason. It may not be completely accurate, but this is a lot more accurate. Your three month average HbA1c. We want it to be above six. Anything above six means that you're having diabetic complications. If you're below six, we usually don't see heart attack, kidney failure with people who keep their blood sugars below six. Healthy people are below six. Anything above six is what we consider diabetic, okay? So the HbA1c is how we monitor you. Every three months, you will get an HbA1c. So we can see where's your blood sugars at? How are you doing? How, are, how is the food you've been eating helping you? How's the medication working? If it's, if it's very high, say you have a 8.5, 9.5, 10.5, 11.5, this is very high in uncontrolled blood sugars. This means you're in trouble. This means we need to fix it. Whether we do it by diet or medication, it needs to be fixed soon. Okay, so second thing is we do, what we use is diet, okay? And this is the biggest thing we have to do. You don't fix the diet, I promise you, you will never, ever fix your diabetes. You will never be able to get yourself into a place where you're not having these diabetic, diabetic complications. Okay, so now let me ask you, what kind, why do we need to eat food? What is the purpose? So the purpose of eating food, you have to eat food because the food gives you what we call energy, right? You need to be able to do stuff to work to go um, you know, mow the lawn, go drive your car, pick up your kids from school. You need energy for that. If you don't eat food, eventually your body's going to die because you, don't have, you won't be able to make energy. Now, we eat three different things to make energy. We eat carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Okay, carbohydrates means any foods that turn into sugar in the body. So that would include sweets, sugar, sweets, donuts, cakes, pie. Uh, also bread. Bread turns into sugar. Bread, rice, pasta, noodles. Okay, these all turn into sugar. This carbohydrates also includes vegetables and fruits. These are foods that also turn into sugar. Now, Vegetables and fruits are way different from rice and bread and sugar. Why? They're full of fiber, which is going to come into play. It's very important to have this fiber. The fiber helps keep, keeps the blood sugar down. If you eat foods that turn into sugar immediately with no fiber, the blood sugar spikes. If you eat a food that has some sugar but it's got fiber, it's going to go slowly up. Okay? 
And that's what's important. That's why we can still eat vegetables here because vegetables help the body uh, balance the blood sugars. Now we also eat proteins. Proteins are meats, chicken, lamb, mutton, fish, also dairy products, cheese, yogurt, that kind of thing. And then fats. Fats are like your oils, olive oil, coconut oil, butter, ghee, nuts, okay? Now the body can eat these three things and convert it into energy, okay? So say we take a carbohydrate, a sugar, it will take the body 10 different steps to biochemically convert it into energy. Energy is the end product, okay? Now, our body cannot do that with plastic. This is a plastic fork. I cannot, my body cannot turn this into energy. This is why I don't eat this, right? Also, wood. My body cannot convert wood into energy. This is why when I'm at work and I don't have any food, I don't start eating my desk, right? We only eat these things, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. These are the things the body can convert. Now, in order to convert these into energy, you need the correct tool. It's like if I asked you to put a nail into the wall. If you want to put a nail into the wall, you need a hammer, right? If you don't, if I give you a nail, but don't give you a hammer, you cannot put it into the wall, correct? You need the correct tool. The body is the same way. In order to convert these guys into energy, you need the correct tool. If you do not have the tool, you cannot turn it into energy, okay? Now, what do you know what happens if you eat a bunch of sugar and you don't have the tool and you can't turn it into energy? What happens is the sugar will be stored as fat in your belly for later, okay? This is what the body do does with it. This is why diabetics have very big bellies. Most diabetics have very fat bellies. Why? They're eating a lot of sugar and carbohydrate that's not getting converted into energy, and it's being stored in the belly. Okay, so the correct tool that you must have to convert these foods into energy is called vitamins and minerals. Very, very important, vitamins and minerals. Now, vitamins and minerals are not like a hammer. A hammer you need one time, you, uh, you buy one time and you can use it over and over again. Vitamins and minerals are more like a tissue. You use the tissue and you throw it. That is what vitamins and minerals are. You use them, they're gone. So every day, every single day, you need to replace your vitamins and minerals. You have to, it's a must, okay? Here are some of our vitamins and minerals. Where do we get these from? Well. Vitamin D, vitamin D comes from the sun, okay? There are foods that are fortified with vitamin D. It's a fake vitamin D, not the kind of vitamin D we want to get. We want to get the vitamin D from the sun. So you need to go out in the sun every day, 15, 20 minutes for lighter skin, half an hour, 45 minutes for darker skin. Okay, B12. B12 is a vitamin that we get from meat, okay? You cannot get it from vegetables. This is why if you're a vegetarian, you need to make sure you're at least getting some supplementation of B12. Now, the foods that have the most vitamins and minerals in the world is fruits and vegetables. The one that has the most in the world is dark green leafy vegetables. Dark green leafy vegetables have the most vitamins and minerals you can find anywhere. Dark green leafy, like spinach broccoli, kale, rocket, drumstick, okay? These are full of vitamins and minerals, the most you can get anywhere. Everyone, every person in the world should be eating a, it, at least a serving or two of green veggies every single day. Why? This is where you're getting a lot of your vitamins and minerals from, okay? Now, we said vegetables, fruits, meats, full of vitamins and minerals. Let's talk about what people are eating at every meal, the majority of their meal, which is rice and bread. Most people in this part of the world eat their plate, mostly rice and bread, right? Do those have a lot of vitamins and minerals in it? 
Well, let's take a look. Okay, so in this we're going to take a look at a fruit or vegetable compared to a cup of rice. Okay, so in this sample we've taken an avocado. Now you can replace this with a cup of broccoli or a cup of spinach or a cup of uh, eggplant or red pepper. It'll be similar. It won't be the exact same, be similar. I have some more of others. Um, and in this sample, we're taking a cup of rice, but here you can substitute bread, you can substitute a cup of pasta or noodles, and those are going to be the same amount of vitamin and mineral content as the rice, okay? So we're going to take a look. Here we have our cup of avocado. We have all of our vitamins and our minerals listed, right? Vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, la la la, minerals, calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, here is our percent daily value. What does that mean? That means every day you need to get 100% of those vitamins and minerals just to survive. That's not even to be healthy. If you want to be healthy, you need a lot more than 100%. Some people, some of this stuff like vitamin C, I would give people way more than 100% every day. Okay, so we want to have around 100%. Okay, so percent daily value. Vitamins in the avocado, 4%, 25%. No, vitamin D comes from the sun. 16, 39, 7, 11, 13, 19, 30, 0. B12, we said, comes from meat. 21, okay? Now our minerals, 2, 5, 11, 8, 21. 0, which is sodium, not a big deal. We get tons of sodium. 6, 14, 11, 1. A little slacking on the selenium here. But that's okay, because other vegetables have more selenium in it. Now, if you ate this three times a day, you ate it breakfast, you ate it lunch, you ate it dinner, would you come close to having almost 100% of all your vitamins and minerals? Yes, you would, right? There'd be some lacking, but you would come close. Okay, now let's look at the rice, okay? One cup of rice. Here we have all of our vitamins and minerals. Let's look at our daily value. Zero, zero, no vitamin D comes from the sun. Zero, zero, two, one, three, two, zero, zero, four. Minerals, zero, one, two, one, zero, zero. You getting the picture here? So we can confidently say that a cup of rice has close to zero vitamins and minerals. Do you see the problem here? We eating this all day long and we've got no vitamins and minerals. So if you ate rice, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, would you come anywhere even close to getting the vitamins and minerals you need for the day? No, you would not, right? This is the problem, okay? Now, of course, we said you can substitute bread, pasta, same thing, close to zero. Now, some people say, well, what about brown? What about brown rice? What about brown bread? Very similar, okay? Brown rice and bread has 1%, 1% more nutrition than white. Is 1% a lot? No, that's nothing. It's still close to zero here, right? 1% is still close to zero. We need to get this nutritionless food out of the diet. It's not helping us. All it is giving us is a bunch of sugar that we cannot convert into energy. So what do you do? You store it. Okay? So I'm going to kind of show you, this is, this is what I call the disease plate. This is how people get diabetes. This is how people get disease, heart disease, right? We all eating like this. Don't feel bad. It's not just you. Everybody in these cultures here eats like this, okay? But this is not the way to eat. This is why we're all getting diabetes and getting ill. So, 60 to 70 percent of the plate that people normally eat is full of bread and rice, right? This is usually what people's plates look like. They get a big portion of rice, 60 percent sugar, rice, bread, pasta, white potato, chapati, yeah? And then they may, some people eat 100 percent this. Some people, just for breakfast, will eat bread. That's it, okay? Are they getting any vitamins and minerals with that? 
None. Absolutely zero. You see the problem. Now, some people will add in a little bit of protein or vegetable, but pretty much this is how we eat, okay? This is how we get disease. It looks like this. Do these look familiar to you? Have you eaten some of these? We have a lot of people eat this way, yeah? They eat a whole plate of rice, a little bit of meat. So how much nutrition are you getting here? How much vitamins and minerals? Barely any. You're getting a little bit from the chicken, but nothing from this rice, right? So how do people normally feel an hour after eating this? If you ask your friends, they'll tell you, I'm usually kind of tired after I eat this. Why? Your body cannot make energy. You see the problem? You cannot make any energy here. This is the issue. We cannot eat like this. This is no good for anyone. This too, look at this. This is my favorite, this Italian pasta, right? Whole plate of pasta. Any vitamins and minerals in there? No. Okay, you get a little bit from the red sauce, from the tomato sauce, not much, and then some bread with it because we need more carbohydrate. We need more sugar. Uh, pizza also is mostly carbohydrate full of bread. This one has a little bit of chicken on it. So again, not much nutrition. And then some people say I eat Arabic. I eat very healthy. Okay, but not really. Let's look at it. The cucumbers, people eat cucumbers all day long. It's not bad. Cucumbers are full of water and a little fiber. So you're getting some stuff that you need, but there's not a lot of vitamins and minerals in there. Tomato has some hummus. Hummus has a little bit of vitamins and minerals, but it's mostly sugar. It's a bean, a legume. It's full of sugar. It is not, doesn't, it's not much more vitamins and minerals than rice, okay? If you had a choice between rice or hummus, pick the hummus. You're getting more vitamins and minerals that way but it's still not that good of a food. A lot of people use it as a diet food. It's not a diet food. It's all sugar, okay? And then you have some vitamins and minerals in the eggplant here, okay? So you're getting a little bit more with this plate, but still not enough, okay? Now, diabetics, you can never, never, never eat a meal of just carbohydrates. You will never eat a meal of just bread or just rice. Why? What will happen to your blood sugar? You eat a big plate of rice, you're spiking. You eat some bread, you're spiking. You eat a piece of cake or sweets, your blood sugar's spiking. You understand? This is why we don't do that. We don't ever eat carbohydrates by itself, okay? You're making your diabetes worse when you do that, all right? Now, so our goal, of course, like I said, mentioned earlier, balance the blood sugars. How do we do that? Stop eating all the sugar foods. Okay, so what do we wanna do? Avoid white foods especially, breads, rice, potato, white potato, um, pasta, okay? But also the brown, brown bread, brown rice, that's not any better for you. People think, I'm diabetic, I can eat all the brown rice and bread I want. No, you cannot. That is false information. Very bad information that a lot of doctors are telling people, oh, go ahead and eat wheat, eat brown chapati. No, you cannot. This is going to spike your blood sugar still, okay? We don't eat those. No grains, no oatmeals, no fruits. You cannot eat any fruits either, okay? Fruits right now will spike your blood sugar, all right? So, you, there's a difference between good carbohydrates and bad carbohydrates, okay? You really want to avoid most carbohydrates except for vegetables. So, our, what a bad carbohydrate is, a bad carbohydrate means it's a carbohydrate that has empty calories. There's no nutrition, no vitamins and minerals. What are those? We've already discussed. Rice, bread, candy bars, white potato, pasta, noodles, potato chips, crisps, donuts, Pancakes, crepes, muffins, chapati. This stuff is no good for you. It's going to spike your blood sugar. You have to stop eating them. Now, on this side, we have the good carbohydrates. A good carbohydrate is a sugar. It turns into a sugar in the body, but it also has nutrition, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. 
And this is very important. This is what the body wants and needs. Now, as a diabetic, you can have all the vegetables you want. There's no limit on the vegetables. You can eat all, the, all that you want. You have to limit, though, fruits. No fruits. Lentils and beans. Dal, black beans, garbanzo beans. You cannot eat these. It's too much sugar. And whole grains, right? Whole grains, oatmeal, cereals. These are all whole grains. You don't want to eat these either because these, right now, these things will spike your blood sugar. So unfortunately, you have to get them out of your diet. Okay, you want to eat more, lots of vegetables and proteins and good fats. Why? Vegetables full of fiber. The fiber helps balance the blood sugar. What about the protein? The protein helps balance the blood sugar. And the fat, the fat also helps balance the blood sugar. Okay? Now, you must eat three meals a day. As a diabetic, you must eat three meals a day. Every, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You need to eat every few hours. Why? We're trying to balance your blood sugars. Okay? If you go all day without eating, what do we have? We'll have a drop, a very low, low, low drop. And then what's gonna happen? Your body's gonna wanna eat a bunch of sugar and it's gonna skyrocket again. We wanna balance the blood sugars by eating on a regular basis, okay? Every meal, every single meal, protein, vegetable, good fat, every meal, including breakfast. That plate that we want, how do we wanna eat? It looks like this. This is your plate. Half of the plate should be vegetables. Half a plate of vegetables every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What are our vegetables? Broccoli, lettuce, romaine, kale, rocket, butter, drumstick, malungay, no iceberg, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, capsicum or peppers, tomato, avocado, asparagus, eggplant, squash, zucchini, Green beans or string beans, sweet potato, beetroot, onions, pumpkin, ladyfinger, bitter gourd, chayo, celery, cucumber, spinach, carrots. Look at all the vegetables you have to eat. There's so many. You can definitely get a half plate of different vegetables at every single meal. And remember, of course, every day you need to have at least some green ones. Every day you need green ones. Half plate vegetable, the other half of the plate should be Proteins, right? Proteins. We can have meat. Meat is fine as long as it's cooked properly. We don't want deep fried meat like Kentucky Fried Chicken. If you're taking meat, putting flour on it, and throwing it in a big vat of oil, this is very bad for you. Very bad. Now, you can pan fry. If you take a frying pan, you put a little bit of good oil, and you take a piece of chicken and brown the, the top and the bottom and cook it, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But no deep frying. No deep fried shrimp, no deep fried chicken, okay? You can have any kind of meat. I don't really care at this point. Chicken, beef, seafood, shrimp, crab meat, lobster, mutton, lamb, any of those are fine. Also eggs, eggs is a protein. Fish, fish is a protein. Nuts, cheese and yogurt. Okay, soy and tofu, beans and lentils. Now, I just earlier said beans and lentils were carbs. Yes, they are full of sugar. However, if you are a vegetarian who has diabetes, you can use the beans and lentils as a protein. It's, it's a lot more difficult, but we, it can be done. Now, if you are a meat eater, you may not have beans and lentils. It's too much sugar for you, okay? So beans and lentils, only if you're vegetarian. If you eat meat, you cannot have beans, you cannot have lentils, you cannot have dal. No. Okay? Too much sugar. Now, you don't have to eat meat every meal. It's better to have a lot more vegetables than the meat. Okay? Vegetables make the body more alkaline, very, much, very good for the body. So you can have some meals where you just have cheese or yogurt or some soy. And you're not, so you're not eating meat every, every meal. And that's fine. You know, or eggs or fish. That's fine. Okay? But you need to have protein with your vegetables. And then you want a tablespoon of good fat. Okay? Olive oil. Coconut oil. 
ghee, animal ghee, not vegetable ghee, animal ghee, cow ghee, um, butter, avocado, nuts. Those are all good fats, okay? So that looks like this. All of these, pla all of these plates match the last plate that I taught you. Half plate vegetables, half plate protein, and a tablespoon of good fat, okay? Does this look good to eat? Yeah, it looks very good to eat, right? It's nice and colorful, it's very attractive, uh, full of vitamins and minerals. That's why it looks good to eat, because your body's saying, ah, I know that's gonna give me what my body needs, all the vitamins and minerals that I need, right? So each plate, half plate vegetables, yeah, we have half plate of um, green salad with some cucumbers and then some sweet potato. Now, sweet potato is on our vegetable list. White potato is not. Sweet potato is. You can have some sweet potato, but you need to watch out. It can be a little too much sugar for some people. So, if you eat a little bit of sweet potato, that's fine. You cannot eat sweet potato every meal. This will have major problems. And you need to make sure you eat it with protein and good fat. So, this plate, half plate vegetables, check. Salad, sweet potato, half plate meat, some grilled chicken. And then do we have a good oil? Well, you could put some butter on the sweet potato or you could put some olive oil on your salad. And there you have the plate. Okay, this one, half plate vegetables, check. We have carrot, steamed carrots and broccoli. Half plate of uh, protein, yeah, we have some grilled fish, some pan, pan fried grilled fish, pan fried or grilled. Uh, and you can cook that with a good oil. So you have your good oil. You can put co cook it with coconut oil in a pan or you can cook it with ghee or you can grill it and put some butter on top of your vegetables, okay? This one, does this match the plate? Yes, half plate protein. This is an egg, egg omelet. So we have half plate of egg, yeah, protein. We have half plate vegetables, yeah. We have some peppers, some mushrooms, some um, uh, spinach, broccoli, avocado, whatever you want to throw in there. Then we use a good oil to cook it with, either coconut oil or ghee, okay? Animal ghee. Uh, you could also do a salad, salad, half a plate of vegetables, check. Half plate of protein, yeah, we've got some shrimp here, some grilled shrimp. And then you can do some avocados or some olive oil and lemon and apple cider vinegar for your uh, dressing. Now, down here as well, this does uh, follow the plate. When I said earlier, no fruit, you cannot have any fruit. The only fruit that's allowed on the program is you can have lemon and lime, of course. You can have all the lemon and lime that you want, but you can also have berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries. You can have berries. That can count as your vegetable in this instant. Every day, you can have half cup of berries, okay? This is, fun. This is actually really good for a diabetic because the berries are full of antioxidants and full of vitamins. No other fruit though. No apple, no watermelon, no banana, no more fruit, just the berries, lemons, and limes. So, in this instance, do we have half a plate of vegetables? If you count the berries as the vegetable, yes. What is the protein in here? This is yogurt, full fat, full fat, plain yogurt. Do not get the yogurt with added fruit and sugar. Full fat. And then what is this? This is a good fat. This is nuts, right? So do you have, does it follow the plate? Yeah. You can have this for breakfast or for a dessert. Vegetables, protein, and good fat. Okay. So I hope by now you can kind of see the idea of how to eat properly and you can mix and match your own things, what you like, according to your preferences. Okay, so for the proteins, meat, we have good meat and bad meat, okay, good proteins and bad proteins. Some of the meat out there is treated very badly. They take the animals, they pump them full of hormones and full of, um, uh, full of uh, uh, bad chemicals that we don't want in there. They feed them GMO foods full of pesticides. We don't want that, we don't want to eat that kind of meat because those animals that are getting poison inside the body, we are then eating them and putting the poison inside our body. This is a problem. This kind of meat is not good. You wanna make sure you're getting grass-fed organic f meat, chicken, beef, whatever it is, you wanna make sure it's grass-fed organic, okay? 
No added hormones, no added antibiotics, no added chemicals. All right. Uh, again, so he, we, we just talked about the list. Any kind of meat, I don't care as long as it's not deep fried. The eggs, the fish, the nuts, cheese, yogurt, soy, tofu, beans, and lentils. Again, only if you're vegetarian and don't eat meat. If you eat meat, you cannot have the beans and lentils. Fats, the bad fat, we talked about the good fats. There are some bad fats you want to avoid. These contribute to diabetes. Canola oil, mazola oil, vegetable oil, sunflower oil, sunflower. Okay, if you cook with sunflower, you need to go home and get the sunflower and put it in the garbage can. It's very bad for you. Okay, margarine, trans fat. So this partially hydrogenated oil, very bad for you, okay? Margarine, corn oil, vegetable, sunflower, mayonnaise. You have to watch out for these oils. They're terrible. If you eat them every now and then, it's okay, but you do not want to eat them a lot. Okay, the good fats, as we mentioned earlier, coconut oil, olive oil, butter, animal ghee, nuts, avocados. If you want to cook in a pan on high heat, we use coconut oil or we use animal ghee. It's, if you use butter or olive oil, this isn't very good because when you cook them on high heat, they turn brown, they turn rancid. The minute it turns brown, it's no good for you. It's very bad for your body. Coconut oil, animal ghee, do not turn brown. You can cook those on very high heat, no problem. You can also uh, take omega-3 or fish oil. These can be a good fat for people. Animal lard, animal fat is good if it's from a good meat source. If you're getting a very bad meat from the grocery store that's chock full of antibiotics and hormones, that I wouldn't use that kind of fat. That fat's not no good either. So that's your good oils. So just to recap, as a diabetic, what do you want to avoid? Fruits, fruit juice, no fruit juice. Fruit juice, again, like drinking pure sugar. Soda, no soda, no diet soda. Sweet foods, no candies, cakes, pies, donuts, crepes, etc. Bread, no bread, white or brown. No chapati, white or brown. I don't care what anybody says, no chapati. No rice, white or brown. No sugar substitutes, no pasta. No white potato. No chips or processed foods. No fried foods, fried french fries, fried chicken, fried shrimp. No milk, no cereals, no oatmeal, no grains, okay? That's our no list. Stay away from those. Uh, you should be getting a picture of the plate, and if you look at the bottom, all of these are listed for you at the bottom. You take that picture, you can put it on your fridge, and every time you go to eat, look at the picture. And look for where's the food that I'm eating. Is it on the green plate that I'm allowed to eat or is it in the red, the red plate, in the red section that says do not eat? If it's in the do not eat section, stop eating it. Okay, we don't eat that. Okay, now if you're a vegetarian, it's harder to balance the blood sugar. Vegetarians, really, if you're diabetic and you're vegetarian, the best diet is to do a raw food diet for a little while. If you do the raw food diet for a while, we can completely reverse you, okay? If you continue to carb load and eat rice and bread all day, this is no good. This is not going to have any, uh, does nothing for the blood sugars, okay? You can have low-carb vegetarian diet. Uh, if you want, I can send you what's on that, what's on that. Uh, and just to let you know, because I hear this all the time, meat does not cause diabetes, and I hear a lot of vegetarians say, oh, you can't eat meat because that causes diabetes. No, it does not. That is untrue, okay? I reverse a lot of people who still eat meat and have no problem reversing their diabetes. All right, you also need to make sure you're exercising regularly, at least walking 30 minutes a day, something. You need to get the blood moving, okay? Uh, so what supplements can you take that will help balance the blood sugars? Chromium is a really good one. Chromium you can get, it's a mineral inside the body that's normally there, and you can take it in a supplement form to help balance your blood sugars. Fish oils, which we mentioned earlier. Liver support. 
In diabetes, the liver is having some, it's sluggish. It's not working as well. And you may have fatty liver, the liver is full of fat. It can't function uh, like it should be able to. So we want to support the liver. So if you go to your supplement store and ask them anything for liver support, like some herbs, milk thistle, dandelion, some stuff like that to support, support the liver. Also turmeric. If you know this one, this yellow one, this turmeric, a lot of people will use this to eat with. This one's excellent for diabetes, excellent for the liver, but you need high doses. One little spoon a day is not going to cut it. You need to take a lot of turmeric during the day to have a real, to see a real good effect. And then also berberines. Uh, a lot of people haven't heard of this one. This is an herbal supplement, excellent for diabetes. It's called berberines, okay? And you can uh, find those at your health store. Now, also avoiding toxins. This is huge. Avoid what you can avoid. Can we avoid air pollution? No, we cannot avoid the air pollution, unfortunately. You, but what can you avoid? You can avoid smoking. You can avoid shisha. You can avoid drinking out of plastic or putting plastic in the microwave. You can avoid alcohol. You can avoid these fake sugars. Okay, these fake sugars are terrible. Do not have them. They're toxic. You can avoid pesticides on your fruits and vegetables. Or get organic fruits and vegetables. You can avoid toxic chemicals in your house. Clean with vinegar. You can clean your whole house with vinegar. It works 10 times better than any of these expensive cleaners that you go buy, including Dettol. Okay, avoid junk foods full of chemicals and toxic chemicals. Okay. Toxic dyes, the red, the red, yellow, blue, these dyes are so bad for you. They're causing cancer. And then be very careful with pharmaceutical medication. Yes, these are toxic. Any medicine you take from your doctor has to be gotten out of the body because it's, has, uh, it has other effects. It's toxic, okay? Now, you need to, if you do this, this will help you control your diabetes. Okay. Okay. So if you have any questions, once you finish seeing this film, you'll have a chat with me. Or if you're seeing this uh, as a workshop, you can ask your moderator if you have any questions about diabetes and how to go about reversing it. So I wish you good luck. Like I said, if you follow this, I've had many, many, many employees here at Al Mansouri who have followed this and they have completely reversed their diabetes. Go talk to them, okay? They don't ever have to have diabetes, all right? Or your choice. Or you can eat bread, rice, and sugar all day and be on a bunch of medications for the rest of your life and go have kidney failure and have a, have a heart attack. That's up to you, okay? So um, diabetes, just and just to let you know, diabetes is very expensive. Some people... Uh, people who have diabetes and have to go buy medications and insulin and stuff like that to take for the rest of their life, that can cost 200 to 600 germs a month, right? 200 to 600 germs a month, depending on how much medicine you need to be on. And you start adding that up, that's with insurance, right? That's with insurance. You start adding that up, that's a lot of money you're going to pay over your lifetime for medications. So... Again, the take home message here is you can reverse your diabetes by following this program or you can just eat whatever you want, all the sugar you want, all the rice and bread that you want and be on medications, your choice. All right, have a good one. Thank you.